Follow me on a magic ride to get more beautiful. Congrats, Dave, for winning our Flurn contest, man. You did an awesome job, your entry. I can't wait to turn it. I'm gonna put it into like a gothic cathedral or something. It's gonna be the hotness. And you won 100 bucks. Guys, we're doing these every month or so. Flurn Pro Contest, basically, you guys get to submit an image to us. We're gonna edit it and do some amazing things with them. Give it, guys, back to you, teach you how to do it, and the winner gets 100 bucks every single time. So again, thanks, Dave, for entering and uh, winning. Everyone else who entered, awesome job. We had a really tough time picking, but uh, in the end, Everyone's a winner because you guys get to learn something awesome. Thanks guys. Hey guys, welcome to Flurn. My name's Aaron Nace. You can find me on Twitter at AKNacer. This is a community built around making you better at Photoshop photography and uh, all week long we're doing lighting. We're in our new studio now and uh, we're using a shotgun mic. Amelia, can you pan up that mic? It's okay. I mean, it's a Rode NTG2 and it's hooked up to an audio express cable and or an uh, audio bus for the computer. It's doing okay, but we're still getting a lot of echoes here. I think we're gonna get like one of those little, like a countryman mic. Do you guys have any experience with microphones? It's been a total pain in the butt because obviously I'm a photographer. Anyway, if you guys know, um, this is something that I, I realized we gotta fix and we're trying to fix it. So if you guys know anything about it, let us know and we can make it even better. Um, this is what we're talking about today. This is a beauty dish. And, you can see it's all banged up. The reason is, is because it's really one of my favorite light sources. It does a really good job of uh, close-up portraits and making people look good. And um, there are a couple positives to a beauty dish and a couple negatives. I'm gonna go over both of those. But um, the only thing you need, if this just looked totally weird to you, it's just a lighting uh, modifier. It's the same thing as like a softbox or an umbrella or a standard reflector. It just goes on top of your light and it changes the shape of your light. So um, some of the positives to a beauty dish are they, they really do create a nice light. What, what happens is your light goes in the back here, and we're actually gonna mount it for you in just a second, but your light goes in the back, and um, it hits this pan back there. There it is. Hits this guy, and it actually reflects all around there and creates a really even light. So you don't have the hot spot in the middle. This is one of the only light sources that does that very well for a hard light source. So um, like a soft box is generally like a soft light source. It's a soft box, soft light source. But for a hard light source, most of the time you get, um, with, like right in the center, you'll get a hot spot. In other words, like if you had a uh, seven inch, I'm gonna grab one. All right, if you guys had like a seven inch reflector like this, just on your light, um, you're gonna get a hot spot right in the middle of it, basically like where it hits your face, it's gonna be a little bit overexposed and then all around it's gonna get a little bit more even. But this doesn't do that because of this guy. So that's the definite positive of this. The other cool thing about this is it, it's kind of right in between the hard light and the soft light. It is still considered, in my opinion, kind of a hard light because it is, you know, it's not huge and it's not really diffused, but because they put, you're supposed to put them close to your subject, they appear a little bit more soft. So that's the next thing we gotta get to. The beauty dish, they have what's called a sweet spot. Now, not all lights have these. All lights, depending on how close or far they are from your subject, will change like the actual effect they make, but a beauty dish is really effective close to your subject. You want a beauty dish pretty much as close to your subject as you can get. These are for portraits and that sort of thing. So if you can get your beauty dish, you know, right even you know, just outside of the frame, all the way to about two feet, maybe a foot and a half from your subject. But after that, they really don't do what they're designed to do because the light source just, it appears smaller and smaller and smaller. So that's like the apparent or the effective light source is like if it's right close to you, it's gonna seem like it's bigger and as it gets farther away, it's gonna seem like it's smaller. And as it gets far away, um, you really don't get any benefits from using one of these. So you're probably better off using like a regular seven inch reflector. So if you can put this, you know, a foot and a half or closer to your subject, great. Use a beauty dish, gonna make an awesome light. But if you can't, don't even bother with it because it's just a big clunky thing. So. Those are some of the positives to a beauty dish, and if you're photographing like a young model who's relatively in shape, um, they're gonna accentuate facial features and really draw out uh, good facial features. That's what they're kind of made for. Now, moving on to the negative sides of a beauty dish, um, they really do draw out facial features. So if you guys are photographing someone who's maybe over the age of 50 or just a little bit overweight, you don't wanna use one of these guys because it's going to, it's gonna make wrinkles more apparent, it's gonna make bad skin more apparent, and it's going to make, um, you know, anyone who's overweight, it's going to exaggerate that, and you really don't wanna use one of these. Um, if you are photographing those, that type of subject, what you wanna do instead is use soft boxes and larger light sources that don't cause as much shadow, so it, don't, it doesn't like, you know, if you have wrinkles, like you can see my wrinkly eye here or something. You wanna zoom into my wrinkle eye? Yeah. See, I'm not, I'm, I'm 28, I got wrinkles, it's okay guys. 
So you can see like you have highlight and then shadow and then highlight, or I'll do it on my, can you see the, my forehead? There we go. Highlight, shadow, highlight, shadow, and it really kind of exaggerates that. And if you put a light, hard light source at the top, it's gonna exaggerate it even more. So if you are photographing someone who does have some wrinkly skin and you want to kind of knock that back, it's a great way, you can do that with a softbox up high and then one down low, a little lower power. And we're actually gonna talk about doing that tomorrow. So don't use this guy if your subject isn't um, uh, just younger and attractive. I don't know, I don't want to like come across as like a, you know, I don't want to say there's anything wrong with uh, older, overweight people. I don't know, I sound like an asshole right now. Anyway, you get the point. It exaggerates facial features, so make sure you want to exaggerate those facial features. Let's go ahead and put it on the light. And uh, I do want to talk about one other negative, guys. They're they're kind of big and bulky. Like they don't they don't squish down. You know, this this is how big they are. They're a little bit heavy. So um, we're going to show you that when we get on our light. But the coolest thing about these beauty dishes is uh, there are a lot of hacks out there on the internet for making these yourself. People use like uh, you know, planting planting potters and CD cases. I'm going to link to some of those below. So I think this was about a hundred bucks or so, maybe 120 bucks. You don't have to buy these. You can actually just make them, they work pretty well. So let's go ahead and put it on our light and I'll show you guys how that works. So we've got our light, bang, here we go, on a boom. And this is a great boom because it's, well, it's on a rolling stand and it's a pretty decent sized boom. Um, but keep in mind the other end here, we have a soft box and that's actually really, not a soft box, we have a sandbag on the other end. And that's really important because it's gonna help balance the weight of the beauty dish. All right, because as you can imagine, this is a lot heavier than just a softbox or an umbrella or something like that. So um, a good balance, guys, with one of these things, you should be able to undo this guy in the middle. And this is what controls like the pitch of this. You should be able to undo that and it should be relatively balanced. If you're getting something like this, let me just kind of move this out of there. And it's like you let go and it does that on you. That's not good. So go ahead and like, you know, make sure it's balanced level. And you want a sandbag that's about the same weight as your light. So make sure it's relatively balanced. Lock this in, and then you can just change the pitch of your light. There we go. And that looks pretty good. So this light, you really want it to be pretty much right here at your subject. We're gonna bring it right around front. And this is right about where you want your beauty dish. Now, it's gonna be one of those things where you have to kind of photograph people a little bit tighter. Like this is for headshots and portraits and things like that. If you need like huge frames, uh, I wouldn't suggest using a beauty dish because it's just, that's not what that's for. So I'm gonna turn on my light meter and Amelia's gonna take a picture. There we go, we're at F14, Amelia. And you're just gonna see what this looks like in real time. I'm gonna strike my bed, I suppose. All right, cool. Now, what we just experienced, guys, come on, Amelia, I'll show you. What we experienced just now is um, we use pocket wizards to flash all of our lights, but sometimes you'll get some misfires. Um, if that happens, usually the biggest thing is your connection. So you just gotta make sure like this pocket wizards push all the way into the hot shoe. And these are radio transmitters, guys. We'll talk about using these more in the future, but basically they're just a way to send a radio signal from this guy. There's another one on the light and that makes sure the lights fire. So it happens all the time. Like sometimes it just, you'll take a picture and it won't work. So you just gotta, push this in because it's kind of finicky and uh, well it shouldn't be for like how expensive it is but it is and uh, make sure all your cords are connected so we're good to go was that beautiful, that was beautiful. <laughs> right on so this is a beauty dish right up close to your subject and that's really how you want to do it and i'm to be honest i'm kind of out of the range i'm 28 and i'm i'm a dude and uh, you usually want to use this on like a nice pretty young model and that's a perfect use for the beauty dish but that's a good distance. Now we're gonna show you again, going a little bit farther away, it's really gonna lose all of its effect. So let's do that. For this, I'm gonna just go ahead and raise it up. Can you zoom out so they can see? All right. Oh, I just hit our mic. Hold on, this is gonna sound horrible. There we go. So we're gonna raise this guy up. And when I do this, it's got a lot of weight on it. We got a 15 pound sandbag on here and a beauty dish. So we're gonna raise it up. I'm gonna leave the boom alone. Like you don't wanna touch your boom here, guys. So we're gonna raise this guy up and use two hands. So grab one end with this hand and I, I keep another hand uh, to choke the stand. Basically, I'll show you guys what we're doing here. So lift this up and then I'll choke it right there. And then you can kind of go up a little bit more and then go up a little bit more. And you can see my voice struggling because this is a, it's heavy. It's a lot of weight. So we're bringing it up to there and now I'm just gonna push it on out. All right, now we're pretty cool in this studio. We, uh, we happen to have, we're pretty cool. <laughs> We're lucky in this studio. We have a couple of stands with rollers on them which make using things like this a little bit cooler. So 
The light is now, what, maybe two or three feet from my face, and, um, you know, if it was a soft box, something like that, that's not really a big difference, but with a beauty dish, you're gonna get a really big difference. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit this again, because we moved it further away, so we need to re-meter. All right, we're at 7.1 now. So the light's gonna look quite a bit different on my face. It should be exposed the same, because we just adjust our exposure. However, it's not gonna look as good. It's not as close, so it's not gonna wrap it around as much. Ready, Ams? Whoa. whoa. There we go. Is it beautiful? Yeah. Right, I'm a model. So that's using a beauty dish, guys. And uh, like I said, the best thing about these things is they, they create a light that not a lot of other lights can create. And I use them all the time with portraits. And you really want to use them up close. Now, the last thing you can use with a beauty dish, and this is pretty cool, I'm going to lower it back down, is a grid. And these grids, you can't use a grid with something like an umbrella. They, they, there'd be nowhere to go with the grids. But any kind of uh, reflector like this, whether it be a hard reflector or a softbox, you can use a grid, and that's just going to make sure that everything comes out in more of a uh, like a, a frontal pattern. I, I don't know what it's called, but um, without a grid, the light might spread out like this, and a grid keeps the light going right at your subject. So, for instance, if you want this light to be just at your subject's head, you can use a grid. So let's go ahead and put a grid on this. All right. So again, I'm just going to hold this guy here and undo it, and then kind of lower it down slowly. You can also buy air cushion stands, which will kind of do this naturally. Um, I don't own any, to be honest. Oh, I just squished my pinky. Don't do that. Um, but there are rubber gaskets in here to keep you from like pinching your fingers completely off. So that's cool. Um, if you guys own any air cushion stands, let me know. Like, what, what's your experiences with those? Are they cool? I've never had one. Um, here we go. There's our beauty dish, and uh, we'll just show you the, the front and center of it. So that's what it looks like kind of coming out. We'll pop it off here for you. You are on there? Beautiful. Isn't that nice? Beautiful light. So the grid just fits on here. Now, different grids attach to your lights in different ways. We'll move this around so you guys can see. All right, I'm on my power cord there. So different grids attach to lights in different ways. Most of the time, if you have a hard edge on your light source, so like this or a seven inch reflector, the grid just kind of snaps into place. If you guys are using a soft box, oftentimes they'll like Velcro in or zipper in or however you want to do it. So I've put a little bit of gaffer tape on the outside of my grid here and here, and that just helps it stick in there a little bit better. Because if you're putting this right over someone's face, you don't want your grid to fall out at them. So you just kind of like stick this in here and push it in. There we go. And what this grid is going to do now, instead of the light spreading out, it's going to go directly towards me. So let's go ahead and take another picture. All right, now when you put the grid on there, your light's gonna change. And the biggest key for using one of these grids, because they really do restrict lighting, what you wanna do is if you have your light, if it has a modeling lamp, you wanna make sure you turn that on, and that's gonna help your model actually see the light. So I'm gonna show you guys how to do that too. We're just talking about a lot of stuff today, because it's, it's exciting, I'm having a lot of fun. All right, let's show you guys the modeling lamp and we're gonna bring it on down. Now for this guy, there we go. So the modeling lamp is just, it, it's basically a lamp to help, your, to help you focus. And when you turn this on, you should be able to see, can you see the light now? You should be able to see the actual light. Now this is not the light that you take a picture with, this is just the light that helps you see what your end light is going to look like. So with that on, all right. Your main goal is your subject should be able to look right into this. Let me, we'll do a little test with the camera because this is what you want your subject to be able to see, okay? There we go. All right, oh, I know. I do know a way to fix the power cord. So I'm gonna bring this up. All right, and then Amelia, you can move the camera until you can see directly into it. Can you? Cool. So. You can see that like if you pan down a little bit, you can't see directly into it. You want to be able to see all the holes in the beauty dish. And whenever you're using a beauty dish or any other light with a grid, you want to turn on your uh, modeling light and then you just tell your subject, like if they're standing still, you say, can you look directly into this and can you see everything? Like you see, if I lower this down a bit, you can't, see, like you probably can't see all the light in there, right? Yeah, so that's what you want to do if you guys are using one of these beauty dishes with a grid. All right, there we go. So I'm gonna make sure I put this in a place where I can actually see into it. These power cords are killing me. I, have, I did have a suggestion, actually. Someone said you can tape the end of the legs, the top part, to the, uh, to the power cord, and that's gonna help. 
All right, there we go. So that's facing like directly into me and I can see it now. Let's go ahead and re-meter because this is actually gonna change what, how much light comes out of your uh, light fixture box thing. <laughs> We're at F5 now, even though it's pretty close to me. So F5, we'll do the same pose again. What do you think? Pure beauty? Yeah. See, what are you talking, a beauty dish, that's what it's for. And uh, that's using a beauty dish, guys. So they really are great light sources. And again, use them if your subjects are, you know, if you, if you want that like kind of hard, but soft light. And I'm gonna flash some of my images on the screen right now of other images that I've actually done using the beauty dish. So you kind of get a better idea of what it's used for. So if you want like a big, broad, you know, like light source with not a whole lot of shadows, don't use one of these guys. And um, that's about it. If you guys have any questions about using a beauty dish or anything else, sound totally like an infomercial right now, but really hit me up, Acanacer on Flurn, or just leave a comment in the box below and we'll help you out because that's what we're here for. Thanks so much for watching Flurn, guys. I'll see you later. Bye. Can you take a picture of me? Improper use of the beauty dish.